Hello, Rob Ryder again. I'm going to try to use this uh, particular chapter out of Blackstone's Book 22, Chapter 21 of Alienation by Matter of Record um, to um, look at land patents and the paperwork that comes afterwards, be it a certificate or a deed, and uh, how it applies to uh, real estate and also real property and interest. We're not going to read this whole chapter, just uh, uh, first number of pages, and then uh, in between mix in some um, uh, some of the uh, instruments that we have and, and what they might actually be. Okay, so uh, assurances <coughs> by matter of record are such as do not entirely depend on the act or consent of the parties themselves. But the sanction of the court of record is called in to substantiate, preserve, and be perpetual testimony of the transfer of property from one man to another or its establishment when already transferred. Of this nature there are private acts of parliament, the king's grants, fines, and common recovers. So, uh, as you can see, the, uh, the court of record uh, is uh, very much a part of this, and, and a court of record, such as like at the county level, <coughs> uh, they can have many special courts. Uh, you know, you can have the one that you would go into when you walk in. That's a court of record. Um, or there's also courts of record, such as uh, that are part of this court of record. They're called special courts. Um, child support is under a court of record, but it's a special court. It only handles child support. Well, there are land courts also that are special courts, and they also are handled by courts of record. And uh, the Register of Deeds office falls under the court of record. So uh, they're tied in together. So let's see what that means to us. Private Acts of Parliament are, especially of the later years, become very common mode of insurance. For it may sometimes happen that by ingenuity of some and the blunders of other practitioners, an estate is most grievously entangled by a multitude of contingent remainders, resulting trust, springing uses, exec executory devices, and the like artificial contrivances. A confusion unknown to the simple conveyance as a common law so that it is our it is out of the power of either the courts of law or court of equity to relieve the owner so what he's saying is in uh, common law which is what deeds are it's very very simple that there is anything to it uh, the part in red they're talking about <laughs> under um, uh, the fiction where we use trust and, and other devices um, that have tangled things so badly that uh, they're almost impossible for any court to handle. So they have to uh, enact a private act of Parliament that by this act, if you agree to the act, then it will untangle this. So uh, one such act would be uh, the Act of Ascension, the Ascension Act of 1910, UK and Commonwealth which is about a three or four sentence uh, uh, statement that's done as an acknowledgement by the sovereign. It's the same one the queen takes and then she gets her coronation from the uh, um, uh, Archbishop of Canterbury. But when you read it, it doesn't say anything about England. It just says uh, uh, the sovereign of their realm. And so I think that uh, as a man, you could take that and, and skip through all this crap and, and just go take the act of ascension. Uh, it says on there that, you, uh, uh, that you're that you a faithful Protestant. But when you look up the definition of Protestant, it merely means that you believe that the Bible is the source of the law. I, I don't see anything wrong with that. And again, you're not taking it as an oath. It's just an acknowledgment. Your free will, act, and deed. All acts are done by your will. Or it may sometimes happen that by strictness or omissions of family settlements, the tenant of an estate is abridged of some reasonable power 
as letting lease is making a joiner for a wife or the like, which power cannot be given to him by the ordinary judge, either in common law or equity. Or it may be necessary in settling an estate to secure it against claims of infants and other persons under legal disabilities, who are not bound by any judgments or decrees of the ordinary courts of justice. And that word ordinary is not there because they're just ordinary like any other one. An ordinary, the archbishop is the ordinary, the province that you inhabit. He has ordinary powers. I think the cardinals and the pope have extraordinary powers. I know that somebody does. I've seen that used. I can't remember if it was just the pope or, or the pope and the cardinals. So he's over the law. Um, all the courts and civil courts are his. And, uh, but it's out of his power even to undo the craft that needs to be done because, uh, uh, well, because of common law. This one we just read has more to do with what they're doing with your property now so that they can, um, with the estate and so forth, how they can set stand in as the proxy owner, which is what they're doing with your uh, real estate right now because as the grantee you've never accepted the deed right uh, according to the dictionary in uh, Boubier's under to record which is right after record it's not in the T's it's in record just go to record it's the next one down and uh, um, hang on here um so it says in there that uh, if you haven't accepted the deed as the uh, the grantee, um, that uh, a creditor, that's the word I'm looking for, there it is. There's a creditor that's attached to the land somehow, and he gets the preference. And it's merely because you haven't accepted the deed. And as we know now, people have, and, and they're getting their deeds to say that... Uh, uh, that they're the sole owner. Now, an interesting thing about deeds, those deeds, is they're indenture deeds. And so go look up indenture, and then look under law when you get into indenture, and you'll, you'll see that these are, uh, an indenture would be uh, uh, the same wording on different pieces of paper, or the same contract, or, or so forth. And they're an indenture because of the way that the seal is put on there. If you look at the seals, they all have a cut edge on it, and that's a symbol of an indentured deed. And in an indentured device used in law is a three-part device, and the court of record holds one of the pieces. And there's these other two pieces that exist. So, um, so I believe what's happening when they're changing your uh, um, you from just a uh, the grantee to say sole owner, that that piece of paper already exists and the court's holding it and they're just waiting for you to acknowledge the deed that says you're the grantee and they slide in the one that says you that you own it. Uh, that's the way th they've been there you know, ever since you created it. It's an indentured deed. Now, wh whether they actually do that or, or you know, it's a statutory equivalent to that, that that's kind of what they're doing. Um, it's an indentured three-part deed. There's three pieces of, of the same deed with the same information on each of them. But why does the one that's in there now say that you're the uh, um, uh, uh, sole owner uh, is yet to be found out. Anyways, we'll continue on. In these and other cases of the kind, the trans transcendent power of Parliament is called in to cut the Gordinian, Gordinian knot and by a particular law enacted for this very purpose to unfetter an estate, to give its tenant reasonable powers, to assure it to, to assure it to a purchaser against the remote and latent claims of infants or disabled persons, by setting a proper equivalent in portion to the interests so barred. So this here is talking about title insurance. That's what this is. This is the title insurance that because they really can't undo the common law side of the estate and they know they're going to be working with a marketable title, you have good titles, so they're going to create a marketable title and put insurance on it for the remote and latent claims of infants or disabled persons. 
as an infant, you can't own land. Neither can a disabled. Uh, only man can own land. And he has to be, to be a man, you have to be the age, age majority and know that you are a man. This practice is carried to great length in the years succeeding the Restoration. All the stuff has been going on. It's, it's a plan that goes time after time over generations so that one generation doesn't know what happened two generations ago. They get to write the books we read. But the law is always there. They never hide the law. It's written right here in this book, uh, 300 years old. So the practice is carried out to great length in the years year succeeding the restoration by setting aside many conveyances alleged to have been made by constraint or in order to screen the estates from being forfeited during the usurpation. So because Martin Luther went and he he put his deed on the door of the church. Now in days of old that is where the uh, um, people would put their record. They would hang a copy of their record uh, for maybe three weeks on the bulletin board or some board at the church. That's where the that's where the, the record was first put. You know, after it was up there three weeks, everybody knew. So you would stop by and read the bulletin board to find out what was going on. That that's where that comes from. Or the town crier or, or whatever it is. But somehow it was made a public record. In the days of Martin Luther, one of the ways was you'd take it to the church. Well, you know, instead of putting the bulletin board he put it in the door. Um so Take a copy of your deed and go put it on a church in the church someplace. Put it on our bulletin board. I wonder how long it'll stay there. I don't think they'll take it down myself. Um, and at last, it proceeded so far that the noble, as the noble historian expresses it, every man had raised an equity in his own imagination. He raised it in his imagination. It doesn't exist that he thought ought to prevail against any dissent, testament, or act of law. So th they think that they have a system um, uh, in his own mind th that will prevail against all of these. Uh, however, the king said that the good old rules of law are the best security, and to wish that men might not have so much cause to fear that the settlements which they make of their estates shall be too easily unsettled when they are dead by the power of Parliament. In other words, common law will always prevail. It doesn't matter what they do. They, they can only do it um, in their head, which means they have to get your consent. And if they can't do that and you stick to common law and, and do the common law way, there's nothing they can do about it. So anyways, to give them the opportunity to do what they do, they were doing, these acts of this kind are, however, at present carried on in both houses with great deliberation and caution. Particularly in those houses of lords, they are usually referred to to two judges, to examine and report the facts alleged and to settle all technical forms. So there's two judges involved that have to look at this stuff, it, it sounds to me. Um, one, I believe, is going to be the land court judge um, for the land, and, and I believe the other one is the ordinary, the, the archbishop. That you know, we're going to be uh, um, notifying those two judges. However, if somebody in the UK can find out who they're talking about here, we would be able to pinpoint who they are around the world. Particularly in the House of Lords, they are referred to two judges to examine and report the facts alleged and to settle all technical forms. So who looks at the acts in Parliament? That would be good to know. Nothing also is done without the consent expressly given of all parties in being incapable of consent. They have the remotest interest in the matter, unless such consent shall appear to be perversely and without reason withheld. So their presumption is, uh, this act has been passed, you know, you need to say yea or nay. If you do neither, then they're going to say that you agree. They're going to say it was a yay. Um, or that it was a nay. They're going to say, you can have your land if you do this, and you say yay. Okay, everyone will know that I have my land. Or if we don't hear from you, then it means you don't want your land. But that's what they're doing now. They, you know, We haven't come forward, and they presume that means we don't want, uh, you know, that we don't want our property. <coughs> And, was, and as was before hinted, 
An equivalent of money or other estate is usually settled upon infants or persons not in existence or not in capacity to act in themselves who are to be concluded by this act. And a general savings is constantly added. At the close of the bill, of the rate and interest of all persons whatsoever, except those who consent to be given or purchased, and who are therein particularly named, those who consent so given or purchased. So on a call yesterday, I, uh, a guy was reading his uh, uh, his insurance policy on, on his real estate, and it looks like it doesn't cover um, the mortgage. So, not that that bothers us. We're going to find out that this is what that insurance is really for us. And, and what that insurance is, or, or um, well, uh, that's yet to be seen. But the tax that they're putting on the property, because you've never stepped forward as the owner, and no land should be uh, vacant and, and not producing what it can, they put a tax on it. And that's what the tax man is. He's been collecting rent for the property. Well, he's collecting it uh, for the proper owner. That, that's his job. He's just standing in as the owner, waiting for the owner to show up. He has power of appointment, power of attorney. And until, you, uh, until we claim it back, um, that's what he has. But, you know, that's your money. He's holding it for you we got to convince them of that, but uh, I believe that that's what, uh, you know, what you can read into this stuff, what, what you read it a few times. A law thus made, though it binds all part parties to the bill, is yet looked upon rather as a private conveyance than as a solemn act of the legislature. It is not, therefore, allowed to be public, but a mere private statute. It is not printed or published among the other laws of the session. And no judge or jury is bound to take notice of it, unless the same is specially set forth and pleaded. It remains, however, enrolled among the public records of the nation to be forever preserved as perpetual testimony of the conveyances or insurances so made or established. Now, an excellent example of this is uh, um, when they passed the Torrens Act in Virginia. Um, it's in the act, but it's uh, uh, but it's not in the code, and it's in the session law, but it's not in the code, because the code is for everybody, so it's not in there. But it references in where it should be that you can go here to find it. And in this particular book, it was in the appendix you could go to. So they took a one sentence thing and threw it in place of uh, you know 40 pages of information that said how the Torrens system worked. Uh, you know, and, and what it was being used for. Um, so th that's what these are. They, they're not. They're not. Uh, not therefore allowed to be public. So it's not in the code. It's a private statute, and you're supposed to know about it. <clears throat> the king's grants are also a matter of public record. So as Saint Germain says. The king's excellency is so high in law. That's why you want to be the king, people. You don't want to be anything but the sovereign, the king, because you are so high in law that no freehold may be given to the king nor derived from the king but by matter of record. So you can't give anything away or, or get, any, get anything uh, except unless there's a record of it. And to this end, a variety of offices are erected, communicating in a regular subordination one within another, through which all the king's grants must pass and be transcribed and enrolled, that the same may be narrowly inspected by his officers, who will inform him if anything contained therein is improper or unlawful to be granted. So if you're the king, everything that you uh, put your seal to, which is your signature in this case, um, it gets transcribed in a roll. That, that's why it goes in, into the double entry bookkeeping books. And from there, whatever the true value of it is ends up in an escrow account. And we've not had access to the escrow accounts. Well, 
I think that that's what we're doing with the real estate, is we're taking the escrow account um, that that piece of paper represents, right? Because we're just trading paper. Look, you can't own the land. It's a lodial. Uh, a lodial title goes to the creator. <laughs> it's his land. We're not taking it with us. But we can have the certificate of title that they're calling a warranty deed um, or a like name for that land grant that says that, you know, we've claimed the certificate of title. We are the sole owner. And we can take that original home with us and leave them with just a, a certified copy in their record that shows that you have that. And, and as long as that deed stays in your family, um, you stay on the property. If you decide to leave to go someplace else or your kids don't want it or whatever, well, you don't sell the house. <coughs> you just tell the county. And then if somebody else wants to go in, that they can have the house. That's how it's supposed to work, you know, uh, under the laws of God, if, if we're tr to live in paradise. <clears throat> These grants, whether of lands, honors, liberties, franchises, or aught besides, are contained in charters or letters patent. That is, open letters, so-called because they are not sealed up, but exposed to open view, with the great seal pended at the bottom, and are usually directed or addressed by the king to all his subjects at large. So when he's sending something to everybody at large, it, it'll have the seal at the bottom. Um, I, I don't know which one to think of right now that that you know that would have the great seal at the bottom to all his subjects at large. All I can think of is if your seal See, you have to look at it this way. Back when they did this in common law, nobody knew how to write their name way back when. So when they first started doing deeds, they would put their thumbprint on it. Right? Well, then they went from a thumbprint to an X, a red X. Um, maybe in their thumbprint. Well, then we got further along, and it would be somebody would write your name for you, because now we all have names by now. They're starting the name game starting to collect all the names and add the surname to the given name to make it uh, a person and not a man. And, and then they can claim some jurisdiction. Uh, hmm. So if your signature is actually your seal, then when you write a check, maybe that's what they're talking about here. We'll have to think about that. And there, and they differ from certain other letters of the king, sealed also with his great seal, but directed to particular persons and for particular purposes, which therefore, not being proper for public inspection, are closed up and sealed on the outside and are therefore called writs close and are recorded in the close rolls in the same manner as others are in the patent rolls. So the letter patent is, um, uh, that would be the grant of land that that the warranty deed is going to say that you're the registered owner of. That It's an open letter. It's sitting there someplace in a file. Uh, open to anybody, you know, and anybody could claim it. That That's why it's a public record in that manner. But there's other ones that are just directed to particular persons which aren't open to be read, although they are recorded. They're recorded as close roles. And again, uh, uh, for a king to either get or give property, it has to be on the record. So there's a closed role somewhere. And I, uh, I I never read this directly from the Bible, but I've seen it pulled out before, that um, talking about uh, an earthen vessel with a closed deed and an open deed and to be held inside. Well, if the open deed is your property you're going to live on because it's open. Well, what's the closed deed? Well, we're going to find out what that is because one's for real property. Excuse me, one's for real estate. It's open, but there's another one to a particular persons. Uh, it didn't say persons. It said persons. That's like saying three times persons. That, that's one way they can say you're a man by calling you a person. Uh, in uh, law nations, uh, 
D. Vitale calls him a, a moral person. Well, to be moral, you have to have a conscience. So that's his way of saying man using persons. Uh, so it, it does the same thing as a letter patent, but it's closed. Grants or letters patent must first pass by bill, which is prepared by the attorney or solicitor general in consequence of a warrant from the Crown, and is then signed, that is, superscribed at the top in the King's own sign manual, and sealed with his privy seal, which is always in the custody of the, of the principal Secretary of State. And then sometimes it immediately passes under the great seal, in which case the patent is described in the words, by the king himself. So an open letter patent, this could be what they're doing uh, um, with real estate. right? I've never seen what a letter patent looks like, but is it superscribed by somebody at the top, the, the, the sovereign, and it works its way down. Um, and now you're the grantee because the sovereign gave it to you on, on the real estate side. But there's another way. Otherwise, the course is to carry an extract of the bill to the keeper of the privy seal, who makes out a writ or a writ or warrant. So uh, if they're saying writ or warrant, I, I'm going to say it's an order. To make out an order, they're upon to chancery. So the sign manual is the order to the privy seal, and the privy seal is the order to the great seal. And in this case, the patent is described by writ of privy seal. So um, I'm thinking that uh, uh, the notary may be playing our Secretary of State. I've not looked into that to see if there's any way to put those two offices together. Um, because it would go from there, then it goes to the Great Seal, which is the seal of the Court of Record, right? And you're the tribunal of the Court of Record, so that's your court that where you live. That Court of Record is your Court of Record, and you're the tribunal. And that would be the Great Seal. Uh, because uh, in law, the largest uh, political subdivision there is, is a county. Okay. But there are some grants which only pass through certain offices, amity or treasury, in consequence of a signed manual, a signature, uh, your seal as a signature, without the confirmation of any other seals, basically. Th that would be like a check, right? That goes through the treasury. Your promissory notes, all those other things. So all these things are grants from the king that are going through the system. Um, and... Uh, I think we get all those back. I think they're our property. The manner of granting by the king does not differ from that by the subject. The construction of the grants were made. Grant made by the king at the sue of the grantee shall be taken most beneficially for the king. There really wasn't that much in these. Or at least I haven't been able to fit it in with what else I, I, I have in my head. But I want to get... Uh, because I want to get to the forms for this thing is too long. And this is granting to aliens, and you can all go read it for yourself. So if we grant our lands, um, which is our, uh, you know, or some part of our estate, uh, us as a king, the best that we can give to somebody else that the grantee can be is a tenant at will. That's the highest status they can have. It's only by our will that they can be there. Right? So you can change your will at any time, and, and they're no longer on the deed. And so that would be like uh, doing a, a power of attorney. Right? You grant it to somebody until you're done and say, well, I take it back. You have it by my will. And as long as they have the power of attorney, uh, they're going to do what they're doing. Now, uh, again, in the definition to record, it says that you know once uh, a deed is lawfully recorded, it acts as constructive notice to all interested parties. 
So I don't think you need to tell anybody. It says in the definition it will be taken care of. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens next. But, you know, maybe we need to write an order to somebody to, hey, where's the rest of our, uh, where's the rest of the real uh, property and interest to this real estate? And to prevent deceits of, a, of the king with regard to the value of a state granted, it is particularly provided that no grant of his shall be good unless in the grantee's petition for them express mention be made of the real value of the lands. So, we're going to stop here for this. and We're going to go look at what I think is this closed role uh, uh, you know, letter patent uh, that they're talking about. And uh, let's start with this. Give me just a minute here. View. Rotate. Okay, I copied this off. A guy, a buddy of mine, sent me his uh, hospital birth record, the one that came from the hospital, and that on the back are the footprints. Well, this is what the front looks like. Picture of the hospital at the top. Uh, so I believe that this page in the back, and the back side of it has the footprints in, are the diploma land patent, also known as uh, the closed court roll. And this certifies that the landed estate, which is your all capital R name, was born to uh, your mom and dad in, in upper in, in proper case in this hospital at time da 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 da. So they didn't produce you; they produced your land, and it's a landed estate. That's there's the land for the estate. That's what's produced at your birth. That, that, that's what they're recording. You know, they're not recording a human; they're recording that your landed estate was created. Uh, and then it says, A witness whereof the said hospital has caused this certificate to be signed by its duly authorized officer and its official seal to be here and affixed. The director, and then it has the attending physician on it, and it has the hospital seal on, on, the, uh, on the left-hand side. And when you look at the definitions like for, you know, what director might be, besides what you might think it is, or physician, or a hospital, or a seal, um, to me this is the outside, when the thing is rolled up, this is what would be on the outside, right? Um, it's describing what's on the inside, but it's not telling you what's on the inside. So let's, let's look at the back. So again, this certifies all this did, right? This is the one you get at the hospital the day you're born. This certifies that your landed estate was created, was born to your mom and dad. All right, so so they've just created an estate. It's an estate of land. So what they do with this estate? Well, let's see what they did. That's the backside. Okay, so everything on this is in proper case or, or just lower case, and, and the first line was family history. It has the father's full name. He's the sovereign. It has his first and middle name and about five spaces, and then his last name. And then there's the birthplace and the date and the mother's maiden name. Uh, again, these are upper lower, just uh, you know, a proper proper case, and then a residence. So um, here, the sovereign is granting because he's uh, when mom and dad get married, they form a union. He becomes the sovereign of both estates. He's the grantor, and he's granting it to. This is all lowercase. Sex of child. Child is lowercase. Boy. Boy in lowercase. Weight at birth. Uh, how much it weighed. 
uh, or how much you weighed, excuse me, you know, how long you were. So he's given the boy this estate. Doesn't have your name on here. Doesn't have your Christian name on here yet. You know, a boy is in lowercase, child is in lowercase, and, and that'll make a difference when we go to the next one because these names will change or the word will become capitalized. So what did he give him? Well, he gave him uh, some land. He gave him that much, nine pound. You know, let's say nine pounds, eight ounces, twenty-two inches in length the left footprint and the right footprint. And then on his, it said mother's left footprint, uh, or thumbprints, but they were blank. There was nothing on there. And you can see that the seal uh, from the front is embossed into the back. I don't know if that's important or not, if that's just because that's the way it is, probably. But then it has this neat little uh, uh, statement at the bottom. Uh, this certificate of birth has no legal value. If it becomes necessary to acquire proof, and proof is evidence, of date of birth, the date that the estate was created, a certified copy of the official birth registration may be obtained from the health department, City of Tacoma. Uh, so the birth, official birth registration, that's the cert certification of live birth. Excuse me, certificate of live birth. So it's saying if you want something with legal value, that's proof that, that that's what you're supposed to get. And uh, so this document represents the land patent, and the certificate of live birth represents the warranty deed. And just like with the warranty deed, it's you know it's missing some things. We haven't accepted it, uh, and right now it's only under one seal the copy that you get. All right. So we're going to go back to this for a minute because now we're going to talk about fines. So the hospital paperwork is what we just read up till here, creating the land patent uh, or the, the, the landed estate. One is an open deed like you have for real estate. The other one's a closed deed which is the real property and interest, the landed estate, because it's made out to a particular persons. Persons being, I think, you know, three persons making a man. We are next to consider very usual species of assurance, of which is also of the record, a fine of lands and tenements, it, which it will be necessary to explain. A fine is sometimes said to be a transfer of property, of record. So the record is on file and now it's going to be transferred to somebody just like the, the, the uh, uh, land patents on file and with the deed uh, it's transferred to you. Well now we're going to transfer the real property and interest which is our all capital letter name. Though it might be more ac with more accuracy to be called an acknowledgement, <laughs> guess what, there's the word acknowledgement, of a transfer of property on record. So, again, the record already says that you are. We just never acknowledge it, just like your deed did for your house. As people are finding out today, this week, you know, people are getting their deed to say sole owner. It's never happened before, as far as I know. And we're going to do the same thing with the real property and interest, known as your all capital letter name. And it's going to be in the same freaking building. Maybe the same office. Let's find out what we have to do to get that. Okay. By which it is understood that it has at least the same force and effect with the transfer of property and the conveying and insuring of lands, though it is some of those methods of transferring a state of freehold by common law, though it is one of those methods. Okay, I better start over here. Um, let's just start from the beginning. A fine is sometimes said to be a transfer of property of record, though it might with more accuracy be called an acknowledgment of transfer of property by record, by which it is to be understood that it has at least the same force and effect with the transfer of property in the conveying and insuring of lands, though it is, though it is one of those methods of transferring a state of freehold by common law, 
in which livery of session is not necessary to be actually given. The supposition and acknowledgement, therefore, in a court of record, however fictitious, inducing equal notoriety. Mm. Okay. Um. When you were born, right, um, that's considered livery accession, commonly known as delivery now, where, where this estate has just been created. But at that second, you know, it's just been given to you um, at that moment. But then this piece of paper doesn't require that to be done. This is, you know, this is the, the beginning of the fiction here. We're going to have some paper replacing the human. And uh, um, it didn't require a livery accession to do the paper, but to create the estate, it did require a livery accession. But more particularly, a fine may be described to be an amicable composition or agreement of a suit, either actual or fictitious, by leave of the king or his justices, whereby lands in question become or are acknowledged to be the right of one of the parties. So we acknowledge the deed, and now we had the right. It's an amicable composition or agreement of a suit. You know, it, it should not be uh, uh, contentious, either actual or, actual or fictitious. You were born, that was actual. Fictitious is this, this landed estate that's been created on a piece of paper. In its original, it was founded on an actual suit commenced at law for recovery of the possession of lands. So they're just telling you that, that what they, they're doing now comes from this way it was done in the past, uh, in common law back in feudal times. And the possession thus gained by such composition was found to be so sure and effectual that fictitious actions were and continue to be every day commenced for the sake of obtaining more security. Um, so this is, right, they always want more security. They want you to write more paper. That, that's, right, everything is a security instrument. Um, and it's so sure that it allows them to do that. Hey, I didn't write the rules. They did. <laughs> a fine is so-called because it puts an end not only to the suit thus commenced, but also to all other suits and contrivances concerning the same matter. So anything that's attached to it comes to an end once you claim it. Or, as it expressed in ancient record of Parliament, uh, luckily it's in English, and, and when you see this stuff in uh, law books, it's in Latin, you really want to go cut and paste it, see what it means. There is no greater or more common security provided in the Kingdom of England, or by which a person can acquire a sure title, than by a fine levied in the King's court. Nor can any testimony be produced more customary for, continu for continuing a, a title, or for confirming a title. It is called a fine because it puts an end in all consummation of the suits, and for this purpose it was provided. So that piece of paper is the fine, the, the, the uh, um, warranty deed is the fine, and so is this right here. I believe that this is the fine for the real property and interest. Let's take a look at this baby. Put it down here we can see it better. Okay, there's, you know, there's lots of things to see here. Uh, first of all, it's got a birth number. Uh, and then a local file number. So, I, from the red here, this is your grant deed, your warranty deed. Most things are uppercase. Uh, you'll notice the word like child on here is uppercase. Uh, on the one I showed you before, it was a lowercase. Uh, yeah, so it was lowercase on, on the hospital form. On the hospital form, it says the sex is a boy. Uh, here it says the sex is a male. And it's in, in all capital letters. Uh, 
This one doesn't have the baby's weight, or, or I don't believe it has length on there either. So i got to make this bigger so we can actually read this. Forget the notes for a minute. How big can we get this? Okay. So as you can see, everything is in capital letters. Michigan, Bay, uh, child's name is in capital letters. And so now we're talking about the fiction, and this is where Robert Allen Ritluski, uh, right, that, that's the land of the state that was created uh, with the birth certificate form, or excuse me, the hospital form, because on the front one, let me go to the front of this real quick again, hang on. Uh, this certifies that your all capital letter was born. So, now it's going to be registered. Because when we get down here to the bottom, let's go to the bottom real quick. The local, uh, I was born on September 5th. So on September 18th, the local, re the local register got this information. I believe that's what it's saying. Uh, and here it has your... Uh, under father, a child, mother, a child. It's your um, mom and dad, upper, lower, with your mom using her maiden name. And this is just, so this is the extract of the bill. Now it's a fine, right, where um, the union of mom and dad created a landed estate. Uh, this is just showing that the evidence that this closed role exist for this landed estate set up by your mother and father because your father's the sovereign of the union compared to what we're going to see next where uh, we have the mother as the informant so I, I think here the mother is an informant because it says uh, below that for the doctor hereby certify that I attended the uh, birth of the child who was born alive. See, this is small. This is lowercase child. was born alive on the date stated. Um, let's see if I can read in mind. On the date stated above. So, um, I think that they're witnessing that the, the landed estate was created, and the child was born. The child of God is born, and, and, and inside the inside the body. This is the first time you were born. Some years later, we were considered dead or lost, and some day soon we'll be born again when we take this back in. All those years in between, between we've been considered a person, not a man. So on on this, the reason I say. Um, well, let's look at this real quick. All right, so here's the information, right? And, you know, a competent officer has put a certificate on it. This is just like an acknowledgement certificate on the deed. Um, that says that uh, uh, Stephen Toth, clerk of the court of Bay, or excuse me, clerk of the county of Bay, doesn't say Bay, Michigan, it says county of Bay, upper lower, and of the circuit court thereof, the same being a court of record, having a seal, do hereby certify that the following is a true copy of the above record now remaining in my office, and the whole whereof, and the whole thereof. So this is a true copy of what he has in his office. And uh, um, And, the, and, when, and when he says the whole thereof, because it's talking about an estate, the estate hasn't been split. The whole of that estate is still there. The whole estate of Robert Allen Ritluski, all capital letters, is still in his office. And he has affixed the seal of the, the circuit court on here. So, you know, that all sounds good, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who they are. They're all justices of the peace. A Supreme Court justice is a justice of the peace. Well, so is a notary. So if we have to go have a notary's certificate authenticated, uh, get a certificate of acknowledgement for, do we have to do the same thing with this? Now, I find this interesting on these because if you'll see, um, he signed this one, and I've never seen a, a signature from him before. 
So I'm trying to figure out what capacity he's doing this in because uh, at the top he's Stephen Toth, all capital letters. On the bottom he's Stephen Toth, upper lower. Uh, on the top he's the clerk of the county of Bay and the circuit court thereof. On the bottom he's a county clerk. Well, a county clerk must not be the same as a clerk of the county of, or they would use the same name. So they have to be different offices. So he's certifying that it is, and he signed it, uh, and in common law, a signature is a seal, so he sealed it, and then it looks like he's witnessed his own seal from a different office, from the county clerk office. Um, I haven't really got that straight in my head, but nevertheless, I think you take this down and say, I need to have this man's oath certified, and they have to go back and look in the books, because you know, this was back in 1984, he's probably dead, but at one time he did. And, you know, have them put their seal on it, give you the uh, second seal to this document to make it a public record. So we cover everything here. So it's a true copy. Yeah, and get the certificate of authority for the certificate officer. But that's what I would do with this as well as do, uh, if this is the warranty deed, well, you need to accept the deed. So you would write an acceptance, just like we're doing for real estate, except you're, you're accepting the deed for Robert Allen Ritluski as the owner. You're, you're accepting uh, uh, the deed that was given to you by, by the king, the sovereign, your father, um, and it's been sitting on the shelf since your, your birth, waiting for the proper owner to appear and claim it. And this is your claim check. Now, there's one more to look at. So this is the certificate of live birth. One last one. This one here. Is the certificate. Certified copy of record of birth. Uh, I'm Stephen Toth, clerk of the county of Bay and the circuit court thereof. Again, I pointed that out because he'll have a different name at the bottom, but at the top, I think he's the grantee on this. The following is a copy of a record of birth. So it's a copy of the landed estate, Robert Allen Ritluski, not a true copy, now remaining in his office, uh, and the whole thereof, so it's still the whole estate. Um, it's what was recreated. It's what was created with the uh, uh, certificate of live birth. <laughs> the child, the all capital letter name child, is there, and it looks to me that Robert Allen. Um, it's been granted to me that this estate has been granted to me. And that has been recorded in, in Lieber Book F on page 2137, October 7th, 1958. So that's when it was put in the, in the record, and, and it's on that book. The interesting thing, though, is if you look at this, um, so mom and dad as creators of landed estate for, from the, for, uh, for the Christian name. Uh, they created the estate, Robert Allen Ritluski, for the Christian name, given name, Robert Allen. And on here, you see that father is uh, in lowercase, uh, you know, normal case. In other places, it, it says father in uppercase. And uh, apparently, all that shit makes a difference, or why would they do it different? Uh, in witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and fixed the seal of the said court of record, 29th day of July. 1963. And there's the seal. Now, the funny thing is, uh, again, in, in common law, you don't have to sign your name, right? You can use the seal. He said who he is at the top, and he's using the seal to, as his proof. Signatures don't mean jack. It's all about the seal. Seal is signature uh, of common law deed. If officer does not have his own seal, you can use a signature. So when he's when he's the Stephen Toth of the County of Bay in the Circuit Court, he has a, a he has one. But here at the bottom right, it's Stephen Toth, the County Clerk. 
Well, the county clerk doesn't have his own seal. His seal is the court of record. Uh, actually, he doesn't have a well, I'm going to say that office itself doesn't have a seal, but because these offices are intertwined in that office is a seal for the court of record. That's why when they give you your certificate of authority, it comes under the, the seal of the court of record. But Stephen Toth, the, the county clerk, doesn't have a, his own seal, so he <coughs> signs his name, Stephen Toth. That's a signature, even though it's typed. Uh, but it's not a signature. It's his seal. It acts as his seal. So there's one witness. And the second witness is the deputy clerk. They're, they're both competent officers. So, and as you can see, this was produced in 1963. So five years after my birth, basically, they produced this record of li uh, certified copy of record of birth. <laughs> and it was delivered to me because I've had in this little manila envelope, and on the front it just says where the name is. It says Robert Allen. It, it doesn't have the last name on it. Um, so what happened is we got, so if we go to this one real quick, right? So here we are. We have this to start with. This is our claim check that we were supposed to take in and claim, right? Um, and what it, what it produced at that time was this put on record that says that you are the owner of the all capital letter name estate. But because you never stepped forward and, and because your parents are considered dead because all this never happened, right? That We don't know what, what happened. They have leased out this. Um, uh, they, being a guardian, they, they appointed a guardian ad litem to take care of your estate. So if you don't show up in seven years to do this, then you're considered dead. Now, maybe it's five, because this was about five years. I, I don't know. Um, so uh, this just shows to me where it's been recorded at. And, and the date of record was October 7th, 1958. Um, and on that record, it shows that the estate was created on the day of your birth. And your certificate of live birth is your proof when you acknowledge it, just like a warranty deed, that uh, um, that you're the proper owner. And this is this one here. Then is I don't know your certificate of uh, your share. Who knows? Your capital share, I, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's more evidence. Uh, see, this is some kind of deed because it, it's been given by a grantor to a grantee, Robert Allen. He's, you know, put his seal, and so have two other people. So uh, it's just like the grantor having done his thing on a house, the exact same thing. And we just haven't acknowledged the deed. So I guess what I'm saying is I'm going to acknowledge both of them, basically, because uh, one is the, um, uh, I believe, the, the, the indefeasible title to your land. And then this one here is the uh, the landed estate that the, the for the, uh, not the real property, but the interest, which is the personal property. And that's all stored in this account uh, under the certificate, uh, certified copy of record of birth. Well, if I haven't confused you all, um, if you have these, let's start taking a look at them because this is the next thing. And, and this is done at the, the birth county. Uh, land never leaves the county, man. How can, it, how can land leave a county? It can't. So it's all at the county. Uh, that uh, thing you get from the... Uh, um, Secretary of State, your, your vital record. Now that's uh, you know that's an extract from this. And in Minnesota Rule 220, it says that if you do a properly formed affidavit, um, 
what the uh, certify or a, a, a birth certificate, a vital statistic birth certificate, vital record, basically saying that you know you're a party of interest in, in that record and what it represents, that you can take it to the